Hi. In this video, we're going to look at objects in Python. And we're going to look at the statement that a lot of people make that everything is an object in Python. And that's really basically true. So in this course, we're going to encounter many data types. We're going to look at integers, booleans, floats, strings, lists, okay, all very typical objects, tuples, um, sets. We'll look at dictionaries, well, the non-type that we've seen before. But we'll see other things as well, right? We're going to deal with operators like plus, minus, that equals equals, that equality operator, or the is, the identity operator, and so on. Even this operator here, which is an operator, it's an ellipsis. We're also going to look at functions, obviously, and classes and types, right? All things that we've actually seen before and things that you've seen before in Python. And we're going to see many, many more throughout this course. So these are all different things, right? You have data types, you've got operators, classes, functions. But there's one thing in common to all of those things is that they are all objects. In other words, they are all instances of classes. So for example, the functions are instances of the function class, right? There is a class in Python that's named function. And when you create a function, it is an instance of that class. Same thing with classes, right? And I'm not talking about the instances of a class. Obviously, these are objects. They're instances of a class. But the class that you define yourself, when you, let's say, do a user-defined class, that is an object, right? The class itself is an instance of the class type. Same thing with types, the type itself. Remember when we type type of int, right, or type of a variable a that was an int, and we, it told us int? Well, that is a class, right? There is a class called int. So this means that all of these things have memory addresses, right? In particular, functions have a memory address. And that's going to be really important throughout this course. So let's take a sidebar and look at that. Let's say we create this function, def my func, okay? So this is the name of the function, my func, and then maybe here we have some parameters. Well, what happens is that my func is basically our variable name, but our variable points to a function object, right? That exists at some memory address and has some state. Now, the state of the function includes many things. It includes, well, obviously the code, right? That's typed in my func but also what's happening to variables as they get created within that scope and so on. So all of that is bound to the function state. So we can look at the ID of my func, just like we can call ID on any other variable. Well, my func is just another variable, it just happens to be a function object instead of an integer object, right? So we can, we can call that and we will get back that memory address, whatever that is. Now, we are not going to be using the memory addresses of functions in our code, right? I just want to point this out so we understand what's happening. Now, what this means is that as a consequence, well, remember, any object can be assigned to a variable, well, including functions. You can, you can assign a function to a variable, and we'll see some examples of that in a minute. Any object can be passed to a function, right? Passed into the arguments of the function, into the parameters as an argument. Well, that means that functions can also be passed to functions, something that we'll make a lot of use of when we're looking at things like decorators, for example. Now, any object can also be returned from a function, right? In the, in the return statement, including, you guessed it, functions, right? So functions are first-class citizens just like any other variable, like integer or float would be, right? You can reference them, you can assign them to a variable, you can reference them however you want, which means you can pass them into functions, you can get them as a return from a function, right? And this really makes Python very powerful. Okay, so one little side note uh, that I want to make, and that's in terms of this my func here, okay? It's very important. My func without the parentheses is the name of the function. If you use my func with the parentheses, that will invoke the function, right? So be very careful here. When we're going to pass around my func, we are not going to use the parentheses. We don't want to call the function. We don't want to invoke the function. We just want to pass the function name. Well, the function name is this name over here without the parentheses. 
Okay, when you have the parentheses and possibly even arguments there, you're actually calling or invoking the function. All right, so let's take a look at some code examples and see how all this works. So let's start by, let's say, creating a variable a, setting it equal to 10. Then we can print out the type of a, and it tells us that it's a class of type int. Right? So in other words, a is an int instance. So if a is an int instance, if, if int is a class, we should be able to create new instances of that class using our standard instantiation notation in Python for creating new objects given a class. So we could do this. We could say a equals int and then pass in the initial value for int. And you'll see that b, well, b is 10. And if we print the type of b, we get that it's an integer, right? So no different. It's just creating a new class. But, you know, this syntax allows us to not have to write this one. Now, sometimes we want to use this and we'll see that when we start looking at integers in more detail. The other thing, too, is that classes in Python can have built-in documentation. And when we get to the object-oriented portion of this course, we'll see how to include documentation for our classes as we write them. But the built-in classes also have documentation, and you can bring them up by typing help, and then the class name that you're interested in. So help int, for example, will return a few things. It will tell us, okay, you know, you have this kind of... Um, constructor, right, for int, where you can just pass in the uh, value that you want to create as an integer. And by default, it will be equal to zero. So if you don't pass in a value, it will just create an integer with a value of zero. You can also create integers with different bases, right? So you can pass in, usually this will be a string, and you tell it what base you want it to be in, and it will convert it from that base. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we have c equals int. Okay, then c is zero. We could also say c equals int, and let's say I'm going to take in this uh, string here, 101, and we'll do a base of two. So base is a keyword argument, and we'll study what those are in an upcoming section with keyword arguments and, and uh, parameters. So now if we look at the value of c, it's five, right? Because this is the position 2 to the 2, which is 4, so we have 1, 4, we have 0, 2 to the 1s, and we have 1, 2 to the 0, so this is 5 in binary notation, which is base 2. So this is another way of creating integers, and so therefore integers are objects, right? And they're instance of the int class. Okay, so I really want to take a quick look now at the fact that functions are objects too. So let's go ahead and write this function here. We'll write a function called square, which is just going to return a squared, right? So a very simple function. You probably wouldn't want to write something like that in practice. Now let's look at the type of square, right? Square is the name of the function. So it's, it's like a variable name. And it tells us that it is a function, okay? In fact, you can print the type of square and that will tell you it's a class of type function okay so it is a function so we can say f is well sorry f equals square right if if square is a memory address reference if it's a pointer we can assign it to another variable so we can do that f equals square and if we look at the id of square it has a memory address. And if we look at the ID of F, it has the same memory address, right? So F is square. That is true, right? So you can call square passing in two, right? And it should return four. But you can also call it by now calling invoking F, right? By using this parentheses. So if we do that, we get four as well, right? Now, a function can also return a function. So let's create another function here. Let's call it cube of a. <clears throat> and let's have it return a cubed. Okay. And now I'm going to write another function. That's going to say def select function. And let's say we're going to 
pass in a function ID um, for now. I'm going to say if function ID equals one, we're going to return square else return cube, right? So what are we returning? Well, if we're going to pass in a value, if that value is one, we're going to return the name. We're going to return this reference, right? That is referenced by this name square. Otherwise, we're going to return this reference cube. Okay. So now we can say f equals select function. And let's say we're going to select the square function. So we're going to do that. So now look at what the ID, well, of f and square is. f is square. That is true, right? Because why? Well, we, when we call select function with one as the argument, it received it here in function ID. And it said, oh, it's equal to one, then return this function square. So we're passing functions around just like we would pass variables around. The only difference is that functions are invocable. So now we can say f of two, which returns four. If on the other hand, we had said f equals select function two, okay, then we'd see that f is actually cube, right? That is true. And f of two would return eight, right? So we can return functions from other functions, which is something that we're going to make really good use of. Now, you can also, if you want, if you don't want to have to assign it to a variable first, you can certainly do that. You can say select function, uh, if I can type, select function. Let's say we'll select the cube function and we'll pass it the value of 3. Okay, that returns 27. What happened is that it first evaluated this, said, okay, I'm going to return, right, cube. And now it applied cubed, it invoked cube with three as the parameter. And we'll see that again in a lot of detail throughout this course. We'll be using that all the time. Now, a function can be passed to a function as well, right? So let's go ahead and write this method here, exec function. Again, probably not something you would write as is like this, but it does illustrate the point. So this function is going to take two parameters. The first parameter is going to be a function. And then we are going to apply this function to this variable here and return the value. So we're going to return, we're going to invoke fn, and its argument is going to be this parameter n. Okay. So now we could say exec function. Well, what do we want? Well, let's say we want to execute the cube function on the value 3. We get 27, right? So as you can see, we passed the reference to cube. It was assigned here. So now, by the way, remember, there was a shared reference to that function. Okay. We also passed the value 3, and it received the function and the value, and it invoked the function fn, whatever it may be, right, with the value. So if we had done exec function square three, we would get nine. All right, so functions are first class citizens, they're objects, just like everything else in Python. So most everything is an object in Python, including operators, including types, including classes, functions, and what have you. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.